I'm Nancy Furness and I'm here in front of MP Ron McKinnon's office in Port Coquitlam and today we're here to rally for just transition. It's time for us to move away from fossil fuels and towards a green economy. We understand that jobs will be affected and we believe that support should be put in place to help make this transition which needs to be done very quickly. So we're going to be joined today uh, by some speakers and have some music and we look forward to um, this event which was initiated by 350.org and is being hosted today by Tri-Cities Force of Nature. Thank you. So we acknowledge that today's Just Transition Rally is taking place on the tra traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of Coquitlam First Nation. And we thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and to care for them, along with the waters and all that is above and below. So once again, a huge thanks to Bill and Kate for starting us off with some awesome, inspiring music. And we're going to hear a little bit more from them later again. Um, also, thanks goes to Ben Perry, Stephen Crozier, Jane Thompson, Sylvia Kojokaru, and I'm sorry if I'm not saying that quite right, uh, and Michael Patty for helping to organize today's rally. Now, um, so a big round of applause for all those people, please, thanks. <laughs> MP Ron McKinnon was unable to join us today but he did send a statement, and I ask that um, you listen carefully to the statement because there are things here that we really do need to hold our government to account for. Um, so here's his statement. Unfortunately, due to a scheduling conflict, I'm unable to attend. However, I appreciate everyone attending today in pursuit of a just, just transition for workers. Canada is working hard to reduce our emissions with a robust national price on pollution, deep investments of more than 100 billion since 2015 towards climate action and clean growth, grants of up to $5,000 for electric vehicle purchases and a plan to ban new gas cars by 2035. We are building Canada's clean industrial advantage by investing in Canada's clean tech companies and accelerating the work that our innovators are doing to cut pollution and move to a cleaner economy. This creates new jobs and opportunities uh, ranging from the installation of wind turbines to the development and production of new batteries for electric vehicles. Programs like Canada's Greener Homes Grant let Canadians receive up to $5,000 to make their homes more efficient and reduce their energy bills while historic investments in public transit provide cleaner options that make our communities healthier, less congested, and more vibrant. We are eliminating thermal coal exports and as a founding member of the Powering Past Coal Alliance, Canada is phasing out all traditional coal power by 2030 with Alberta to phase out all coal power next year. The Canada Coal Transition Initiative is an important example of essential programs to support worker skills development and helps communities adapt to a low carbon economy. Consultations by the government on a just transition are currently underway and I encourage you to participate at www.justtransition.ca. So there's a little bit of homework for us all. We can get out there and start telling the government what we really think needs to be done here. Um, so. These uh, consultations will inform how the Government of Canada can ensure a just, a just and equitable transition to a low carbon future for workers and for all of our communities. Now this is a statement from your Member of Parliament, Ron McKinnon. And while we do appreciate the work that's being done by the Federal Government and by Ron, we all know that we need to move much more quickly on this. So what we're doing today is we're here to help Ron McKinnon and the federal government to move forward a little more quickly on this. We don't have a lot of time left and we can't keep pushing the can down the road. So what I would like to do today is to make a very special announcement. 
in that we are opening up the very first Ministry of Just Transition. And I have the pleasure today of introducing to you your very first Minister of Just Transition, Mr. Ben Perry. Okay, so that's good enough, I think. Uh, so I'm here to welcome the minister to his new office, and uh, I think that we should uh, let him know a little bit about what his challenges will be and what our ex expectations are. So this is a little song that I wrote in commemoration of this occasion. Leaders are failing in spectacular style, They're building their pipe dreams and faking their smiles. Speeches, excuses, I'm sick of them all. Don't it seem all hope is fading? But authorities crumble and soon they will fall. Rise up. No time for waiting. Rise up, for oh, there's no time for waiting. The rivers are rising, smokes in the air. If not for the plastic, oceans soon would be bare. So don't sleep through destruction, grab hold of that wheel. Steer clear the lies they are claiming Cause there's a mighty vision we gotta make real Rise up, there's no time for waiting Rise up, for oh, there's no time for waiting There's no staying the course, it's killing us all the blindfold is on us, our backs to the wall. It's a head-on collision, it's the end of the road. But don't wait for some savior to save you. Cause the center is shifting and nothing will hold. Rise up, there's no time for waiting. Rise up, oh, there's no time for waiting. Ice caps are melting, the forests are flame. All fingers are pointing with no time to lay blame. Cause the future is calling dust, joining the cars. From a whisper to a roar, it's been raging. Sure, the deck has been stacked, but this new deal is ours. Rise up, there's no time for waiting. Rise up, for oh, there's no time for waiting. So what are our choices? How will we? How can we prevent what is left to defend? We're all in this together. And one thing we know, we can't allow three to keep stealing. Enough is enough, let's get ready to roll. Rise up, there's no time for waiting. Rise up, oh, there's no time for waiting. Rise up, Mr. Minister, no time for waiting. Rise up, oh, there's no time for waiting. My fellow Canadians, we, the Government of Canada, have been listening to your voices. 
Across the country, we have heard about your priorities. Canadians value hard work, prosperity, justice, and the environment. Some say these values work against each other, that you can't have prosperity and jobs if you protect the environment. But this government is here to tell you we can have it all. We know the perils of the climate emergency and the competitive economy we must survive in. In 2016, our Canadian government signed on to the Paris Climate Accords to limit global warming to below 2% by reducing carbon emissions to net zero by 2050. We did this, we did this knowing that we must also safeguard the economic powerhouse of our economy that is the energy industry. The, my fellow Canadians, Canada is a beautiful country with such an abundance of nature and natural wealth. Canadians want our government to protect and preserve our nation. And we, the government of Canada, have done so by adding new parks across the nation and providing financial support to Canadians and others so they can realize the great wealth of our oil and gas resources. Our Ministry of Just Transitions is committed to supporting the growth of new technologies that will reduce emissions across all sectors. We will find new ways to extract oil and gas using electricity to power the machines that do the extraction. We will be increasing the production of clean burning natural gas to help transition long into the future. That we will continue to subsidize efforts to reduce consumer emissions such as plastic bags and by taxing gasoline so that we will drive less. <clears throat> but, but most importantly, our ministry will spare no effort in pursuing the vital technologies that capture carbon from our atmosphere so that we can, so that, so that we can sustain our fossil fuel industry this ancient source of energy long into the future. In closing, I am honored to open and to begin leading this ministry of a just transition today. You can count on me from day one to balance the importance of our natural environment with the great wealth that we can earn from the carbon-based energy in the ground. As Canadians, <laughs> As Canadians, we always look to the future, and so we will remain committed to the sustainability of our planet and the sustainability of the oil and gas economy into 2050 and beyond. Our country needs it, and our country needs this ministry. Thank you. Now we'll be taking submissions from uh, uh, any members of the public who wish to speak. Oh, yeah, one Thanks, thank you. Uh, no level of government is doing enough, obviously, to deal with the climate crisis. We have to do so much more, we all know that. Uh, the sustainability teams came to our Metro Climate Committee probably about two years ago now, and they said to us, your generation is destroying the mental health of our generation by failing to deal with the climate crisis. And I was like, that is the plain and simple truth of it. And we have to do so much more. You give me hope, you guys seriously give me hope. And I think if we could compel people to just, your generation to get out and vote much more, I know we can turn the tide and I, that's what I'm hopeful for. So I don't mean to put pressure on you, but there's, there's where my hope lies. Yesterday we had a Metro Climate Committee um, same one, just another day that the ones at the sustainability teams came to, and it felt super heavy. We heard how the board of Metro Vancouver is just not taking the recommendations of the Climate Committee, and they are watering them down, and they're reining them in, and they're 
they're wanting to do less. And it was it was a heavy meeting yesterday, and I felt I felt burdened walking away from that meeting. Um, so I urge everyone, if you know someone who is on that committee, or reach out obviously to your elected people, your local electeds, and put some pressure on them. Tell them time is running out. We need we need more hope for the future. The recent IPCC report will send a chill up your spine if you read it. Um, I read the condensed 35 page report and it made me want to cry. But I also know that there's a lot of people like standing around here today who plan to do things to change things for the better. We have better options for energy and we have better options to elect people to local, provincial and federal governments who care about the climate crisis and plan to take meaningful action. So that's, I think, where we need to start start to focus our energy. This year is a, is a local election at the end of the year. Let's, let's start to give some support and elect some climate activists and start turning the tide on all three levels of government. Let's bring some hope to our communities. Never give up the fight, everybody. And so, so grateful for all your energy here today. Thank you, everyone. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Nicholas Burling and I'm speaking today from the perspective of a tradesperson and how we can create a just transition for everyone. So um, I'm a social justice advocate and I'm also someone who works in the construction industry. And uh, from my perspective, uh, I'll be sharing what it's like to uh, try to transition and how to do so in an intersectional manner. Uh, a lot of my advocacy work is focused on uh, intersectional advocacy. So we often think about the impacts of change on our own lives, but it can be difficult to understand how change affects others. I'm often criticized for driving a van, for instance, because people think I should reduce my emissions by switching to an electric vehicle. And that might seem easy to many of you if you're in a position of being able to afford an electric vehicle, and if your requirements from a vehicle are fairly basic. But that's not the case for everyone in the trades. Currently, as an example, my best option would be a Ford e-Transit, which is not currently available, starts at $65,000, and only gets 203 kilometers of range. 203 kilometers is not nearly enough to be visiting sites or going on trips, and I would then have to buy a second vehicle. And as someone who tries to participate in the construction industry in an ethical manner, I don't make a lot of money. So to spend $65,000 on a vehicle is already a lot, and then to add a second vehicle onto that is just impossible. And I know that I'm not the only person who faces barriers like this when it comes to transitioning to a greener economy. So this is just one of the barriers that tradespeople face. You can look at the high cost of reclaimed wood to understand why construction companies rarely choose to buy recycled materials. And then you can factor in the time it takes to recycle and you can understand why it's so common for people to just take everything to the dump. Uh, I've worked for many construction companies where unfortunately they've just asked me to take everything to the dump regardless of whether it's cardboard, plastic, things that could easily be recycled but there's a, a cost associated with that and materials that are environmentally friendly also tend to be more expensive less durable and or not as well known so these costs get passed down to the clients and clients will typically hire contractors who have the most competitive quotes this is an issue that can't easily be solved without government regulation but if you start bringing in government regulation then you also increase costs and potentially lead to issues like the affordability crisis uh, or making that crisis even worse. So it's not a, a simple solution and, and lower income people have a harder time transitioning to greener alternatives. So my question would be, will you financially support others so that they can absorb the cost of the changes that you want them to make? Or do your responsibilities end at the changes that you make in your own life? There's an expression that comes up frequently in my advocacy work, which is equity can feel like oppression when you experience privilege as normal. If you're in a position of being able to drive an electric vehicle, live near work or transit, or not have to dedicate your time and energy to meeting your most basic survival needs, you're in a position of privilege, and you may not be able to understand how a lack of that privilege can make it more difficult to live an environmentally conscious life. 
Are you willing to give up some of your privilege to help others? If you're not, it's not your place to judge the choices of people who lack the privilege that you have, or to push for changes that will negatively impact others more so than yourself. This is why I tend to direct my advocacy work towards governments and large corporations, as opposed to individuals. So coming back to my example of construction vans, if you want to end the reliance on fossil fuels, such as uh, for people in the trades, an example, um, sorry, um, so coming back to my example of construction vans, if you want to end the reliance on fossil fuel vehicles, you need to ensure that there are alternatives available for the people who rely on fossil fuels, such as people in the trades. As an example, increasing taxes on fuel may push some people towards cleaner alternatives, but it also makes life more difficult for people who are already struggling from a lack of alternatives. The definition of just is based on or behaving according to what is morally right and fair. When we talk about a just transition, we're talking about equity. In order to achieve equity, you need to have people in positions of privilege willing to do what is morally correct by giving up some of their privilege in order to uplift others and make life more fair for them. Will we ever live in an equitable society? Probably not. Can we aim for a just transition to the best of our abilities? Absolutely. Thank you for your time. and they finally paid off their bill about seven years ago. We can't do that. Our slaveholders, the oil industry, has to pay for it this time. Segregation was legal, but protesting against racism was criminal. Corporate ecological damage such as my mine at Jedway, harvesting, sorry, cutting down our forests, our old growth still going on, that's legal, but to protest it, you can get chucked in jail. <laughs> Rule of law is what we all talk about. It's time to get there. Okay, now I want you to think, what did you do when you first woke up? What happened? One thing. Okay, uh, okay, so in that bathroom, when you turned on the tap, was government in your life? How was it? How come? How was government? They paid to get the water to the house and they made sure it was clean. Clean water. Okay, you, you had breakfast. What did you have? Just, just, just trust. Transition, what did you get? Toast. Toast. Now, how did you know that was edible and you could eat it? Yes, and there are regulations in Canada on that grain and the processing, how it's processed. Okay, how many of you drove a car here today? Put your hands up. Okay, how did the government interfere with your lives there? Get, no, okay, gas taxes, but maybe they're paying for getting rid of stuff. What else? The roads were safe. Your car had a uh, windshield was shatterproof. In other words, they were there to make safe, you safe. So in other words, we have to change the laws and change things, okay? In other words, basically, we have to make your life safe, and that's a just transition. We are there, and listen, right now, BC does have hybrid um, transportation, and by um, 2032, they're gonna have 12 to 14 electric vessels. Norway, right now, all of their vessels are electric. We're in a transition, we can do it. There are now electric planes, and basically, these ones are going to be in there by 2035. I'm giving you a hope. Look at right now, transportation. We got Ballard Energy in BC, and it's in Burnaby. They are supplying 
Hydrogen buses in Scotland, Germany, globally. We, not here. We just, we basically last year had two higher, uh, bought purchases of uh, transit. They were all ice. But we have, but we, we actually have the industry right here to supply. So we have to change the laws. That's what we have to put pressure on you, on you guys to do. Because this is available right now. In other words, we've got to get it on the road. Thank you. Look at it's up to you. We have to talk to these guys and get them going. It's possible. I'd like to introduce our first Deputy Minister of the Just Transition uh, Ministry of Canada, Stephen Crozier. Uh, so I'm re I really am pleased to accept this appointment. Um, the, uh, with, uh, one thing that will become uh, be a surprise for the, uh, uh, for the minister is that I've been working with Abby Lewis and Seth Klein and uh, you'll be happy to know that we will now have a Just Transition Transfer Agency. Uh, we're going to turn speech into action. And Seth Klein is going to be the commissioner and CEO of this uh, new Crown Corporation. So, there's been a question, of course, hanging in the air for decades now, and that is, how will we afford this transition? How can we possibly afford it? Where, of course, we all know that the question should be, how can we not afford it? We have to pay for it. And there are many ways of doing that. I'll get to that in a minute, but uh, first of all, I want to let you know where we are going from here and the direct actions that we are going to be taking. So first, the Just trans uh, Transition, uh, and also I do want to thank Abby and uh, Seth for uh, helping me with this. The first, uh, uh, the Just Transition Transfer Agency uh, will be under the Climate Emergency Coalition Government. This, I believe, will be a surprise to the minister right now that we do have a climate coalition uh, government which is taking over as we speak. We are mandated for not just rapid climate action but sweeping climate justice. We know the significant public expenditures will be required in order to achieve this. And just as the pandemic has taught us the cost of inaction are mass death and suffering. There really is no alternative. We have to spend what it takes to, live, to win. And what does winning look like? Well, we're going to do it starting right now. First, we establish a rigorous science-based carbon budget for each and every sector of our economy. And we legislate lower emissions. We legislate lower emissions year after year. For the first time in our history, we will accomplish this. In fact, deep emission reduction targets over the next three years will put us on track to cut our climate pollution in half or less in less than a decade. But winning also means leaving no one behind, especially in regions like Newfoundland and Labrador, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and northeastern BC that have long relied on revenue and jobs from oil and gas. And that's where the Just Transition Transfer comes in. With funding from Ottawa, in just three years, we will establish a Just Transition Agency in each province and territory, all jointly administered by all levers of, levers of government, including Indigenous nations. Those reasons those regions just mentioned, as well as indigenous communities across the land, have been prioritized for transfers that recognize that they have to bear the biggest burden of transition. I'm here to announce that for housing, transit, land bank, and more, the Just Transition Agencies will play a central role. I'm announcing the convening, listening, supporting, coordinating, and vitally funding all these exciting initiatives starts today. No longer the hollow promises of days past, 
The just transition transfer will put billions of dollars annually into the jobs and infrastructure we need and will continue to need to catapult our society into this new fossil fuel free area. The, the just transition transfer will backstop the good jobs guarantee for workers in carbon intensive industries, ensuring the promise that no one will be left behind. Through our worker-led retraining and job matching agency, featuring a Just Swipe to Job Swap app, thousands of workers will be able to leave the fossil fuel industry and work in other fields while continuing to earn decent unionized pay with benefits. They will be decommissioning pipelines and cleaning up well sites, drilling for geothermal energy, working in the heating and cooling industry, building high-speed rail, retrofitting and fuel swapping buildings, improving forest resilience, and of course many will be switching to the booming renewable sector where worker-owned energy cooperatives are already flourishing. Thank you, Tri-Cities Community Television, for being here today. We are very appreciative of your time and energy covering the community. So I think what's really frustrating for all of us here is that you know, the government continues to give handouts to big oil and fossil fuel industries, and yet those uh, subsidies those incentives should be going to green technology and green energy. Uh, there's absolutely no justifiable reason this day and age that we're giving big money to corporate oil. We're here today at the Just Transition with Mr. Ben Perry, who has just been sworn in as our new Minister of Just Transition. And I'm wondering, Ben, if you can tell us a little bit about um, why we're here today, what just transition is and why it's so important that we move forward with it quickly. Well, I've learned a lot. I've, I've been listening to Canadians, but especially to the activists today. And we know that the time is now to uh, fight the climate crisis, and we can't do it unless we address the issue of jobs and the economy. So we need to find a way to do both of these at once. That's great. Thank you so much. And I guess um, one question we always like to ask is, what would you ask of your constituents? How can they support you in doing your job? Is there a role that constituents have to play in helping you push forward this just transition? I, I think constituents need to get involved. We need to get involved in our local government. We need to get involved in the provincial and, and federal government. And we need to get involved in local organizations that are advocating for the environment and climate action. And one last question, outside of your new position, I know you're going to be busy as the Minister of Just Transition, but do you have any other political aspirations that you might be looking forward to in the near future? Besides the Ministry of Just Transition, I may be interested in municipal politics in the city of Coquitlam or other cities. That's great. Well, we'll look forward to hearing more from you so shortly then. Thanks very much, Ben. Thank you, Nancy. We're here today again at the Just um, Transition Rally and with me are some members of Tri-Cities Force of Nature. And I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit about who Tri-Cities Force of Nature is and why you're here today at the Just Transition Rally. Yeah, absolutely. So Tri-Cities Tri Force of Nature is an environmental advocacy group and what we try to do is look at a lot of different projects within the Tri-Cities. Um, it could be kind of city building, it could be looking at what uh, people want in order to transition better uh, into a gr more green future, and we try to figure, uh, pull out information that we can give either to our supporters or to people in city governments to create a more informed green transition uh, going forward. That's awesome. And I was wondering if you can tell us, are there more Force of Nature um, events coming up or is there some way that people can reach out to you to get involved? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, social media is the best way to reach out. 
Right now we're actually looking at, there's uh, some proposed development um, uh, at the Fremont Connector area in Port Coquitlam that we're kind of looking at and we're trying to figure out exactly how we want to push to make that a uh, more green project. But, um, you know, all of your support and information and your feedback on that would be super duper helpful. So go, looking out on social media, we'll always try to put out whatever we're working on and we'll always try to get uh, more people's feedback. Well, thank you so much for coming out today to the Just um, Transition Rally and for all your help in organizing. And we wish you all the best and we'll look forward to hearing more from you shortly. Thank you. Thanks,